Hi everybody, it's Andy from Snow Camps Europe here with Paul from the Ski Instructor Academy in Caprun, Austria with another podcast. Mm. What we're talking about, Paul. Actually, before we start, All right. have you called Tom Gelly? Have I talked? No, I didn't. Uh, sorry, Tom. <laughs> it got really busy at the end of the season. Um, and I will, I will get round to it when it quietens off um, in April. 2024 yeah um but yes i will i will um because actually it, it, it brings me on to a, a comment that was made but i'll, I'll do that in a later podcast. i just remember in the last one you said you were going to call him and i, I was i was I thinking did. you probably haven't and I I'm, su- I'm sure he watches all of these from start to end although he never comments does he <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, hope he's pressing, I hope he's pressing like and share then uh, yes of course yes. <laughs> um what i thought about? well Sometimes on the odd occasion when I, when I, I get a chance to see some of the, the things popping up on social media, um, one of the big things is I see a lot is cutting poles, um, ski poles down. So it's nothing new, but it, it, it sometimes to me, it, maybe it hits me as some people trying to tell us something that we've done for years and years and years and years and years. Mm-hmm. Um, but it all seems to be like somebody's telling people this, like I saw that it's a new thing. And I'll, I'll come on to that when I talk about coaching. But... The, the cut the poles thing down is, it's very relevant and important to certain styles of skiing, especially. Um, and I do believe that 90% of skiers tend to have their ski poles too long because mm-hmm. almost like they've got a system in shops, you know, bend your arm to 90 degrees and that's how it's going to be. And all the kids just follow the same thing that are working in the shop and they tell them people to do that. And it ends up being a situation where I would say between anywhere between three and up to even 10 centimeters, people have their poles too long. Um, And it possibly is from the old school style ski and the flamboyant style unweighting of the skis that we had. Now, this is the issue where, you know, making a one-stop sweeping statement of, oh, just cut your poles down and you're going to be a better skier, you're going to get lower, you're going to get this, is not always the case because some people, you cut their poles down and they'll just hunch. Yeah. They'll just sort of like, you know, crunch up into a really, you know, it's not really a dynamic crouched position as opposed to just a fetus position, you know, like, yeah, like, it's a, more like a, a, hin- a hinging of everything. <laughs> yes, just like, yeah, sinking, you know. Yeah. So cutting the poles and why, Andy, what, why has this come about? Oh, well, as we say, it hasn't just come about, but why do people do this? I think a, lo- a lot of the people that we see on Instagram who have relatively well, no, very short poles, or the guys who are doing this very down and weighted, rounded calf turn and getting their hip to the ground. Because if they got their hip to the ground and they had a a, a, a full length pole, let's say, the pole plant's going to be up here because they're, they're, they're almost lying on the ground. Mm. So they're, they're, they've reduced their poles down. Now, whether they've cut them or they've just gone for like a one meter pole rather than a 115 or 125, or even shorter, is purely because that pole movement. Uh, pole you meant one, I mean, how, how, how short are they going nowadays? Because mine, mine are at 115, I think. Well, yeah, mine are 115. And but ma- I'm taller than you, if I buy a foot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure you are. <laughs> I'm probably <laughs> not. Enough. Are, yeah. I just like to think I am. I'm um, six foot. <laughs> and then, um, so yeah, mine are 115, but I think I could potentially drop five off if I wanted to, if I was going to do a... a if I was going to do a much more uh, hip to the ground kind of turn, but I'm not because I'm old. Um, but I would, I would, I would, I'll ask him, I'll ask Riley, but I would expect Riley is skiing uh, with a, a one meter pole, maybe even less, maybe 90, 95. Yeah. Because I, short. I was doing, I'll post up some of the, I was doing some dynamic skiing the other day, hip to the ground style st- skiing and. Um, at, at your age? At my age with my knee. Wow. Um, and. I actually had the Van Deer ski, the... Oh, Marcel ski. The Marcel Hirscher ski, so I was out testing it, different lengths. And interestingly, because I had, I think one day, Julian had forgotten his pole, so I'd given mine, and I had my extendable ones or whatever, um, which are a bit flimsy, but I think they might have been at about 118, actually, and it pops you, you know, between that type of turn, because if I make that hip to the ground, as you said, and then you come up, and you, you often do need quite a strong pole plant, almost like a blocking pole plant mm, because of the deflection. Up, yeah. um, I found, like, I was getting popped up with my whole upper body on between some of the turns because I was failing to control it, and I was getting popped, popped, 
definitely popped up. Um, and having the shorter pole definitely allows you to transition from one turn to the other at a lower depth, easier. And of course, people might question, go, well, why don't they have that in racing, for example? You know, like because their, their poles look huge and super mm -hmm. G and things like that. Um, but in this case, because as Andy's saying, it's a, a specific style of skiing as well, I think, where people use a, a much more shorter pole. And you often find this, for example, with ex-racers. They don't. They still have their relatively long poles because they're just that's comfortable to their way of skiing. Um, but I did find that when I went back to my 115s, it allowed me to make the transition between the two turns without that pop, you know, without getting fired out. Yeah. Um, and I felt more comfortable getting lower um, because as you drag your hand, let's say your inside hand back forward, um, it doesn't catch the ground in the same way. You know, you can sort of balance better, I feel, as well. Mm. So is it, is it, it, it's, I think it's beneficial. But as Andy says, if you are like, let's say, a bit older or a bit um, slower from turn to turn, you tend to make more up forward then the shorter pole maybe is not for you. you it's, know, it's probably going to hinder it because you, you're then going to end up reaching further and mm -hmm. therefore you're going to get rotation of the shoulders. It's going to put weight into the back of the uphill ski. It's going to hinder the turn. Um, yeah, if you, especially if, like you say, you're leaning on it and it's, it's way below you, you're going to start dropping in to the inside maybe or something. So I think um, the, the, the shorter pole is... It's definitely, look, when we set up our kit with all the ski instructors on arrival, we do set them up on short poles. You know, I would say probably five centimeters shorter than the shop's selling. Mm -hmm. um, and now, now, obviously, the shop's used to it. They know what we want, and they know not to give them a 125 if they're, you know, if they are six foot two or whatever. They know we don't want them on that. We want them on a 120 or a 118. I think the annoying thing for the shop is, is that we're quite specific because we do think the pole does create a lot of issues. So th they sell all these poles and then kids are going in getting two centimetres yeah, chopped off and they hate down. it. And what they want is basically to sell a 15, a 20, a 25 or a 30. Yeah. They don't want to be selling a 117 or a 118 because they've got to cut it. Now, some people will use, like I have um, the Lecky extendable poles, yep. but I'll yep. be admit here that I've, I've snapped a few pairs of them. Yeah, Paul, Paul Riley's partner in crime, Paul Lorenz, he has extendable poles. And you quite often see, depending on what he's about to do, he will change the length of his pole. So if he's doing a short turn, it'll be one length. If he's doing a long turn, it'll be another length. Now, again, for me, and I, we've, we've said this before, I'm like kind of, a, I, I like to have one ski and try and ski everything everywhere. And on occasion, I'll put a slightly fatter one on if it's really deep powder. But... I don't know if I could be f bothered about, oh, okay, I'm going to go down here and do long turns. Adjust the pole. Off we go. Okay, now I'm going to go down there and do some short turns. So I'll adjust the pole. Oh, now I'm going to go to the moguls. So I'm going to make it a little bit shorter again. Yeah. Just. I, I think that's exactly true because um, if you put the right, you know, the right fuel, the right oil and everything into your car, it might go a bit faster. But of course, for a lot of us, we just want our cars to go. We're not going to get up every day and change the tire pressure and all that sort of stuff just to, to go to, to work. But if you are in that realm, that, that, that small minority of skiers who does need that extra, you know, that extra little thing that's going to help, then great. Mm. You know, it's like somebody like I, I take my pillow with me when I go and sleep in a hotel. You know, you, yeah, you, yeah, they're, 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 nice there's like, sleep, yeah. yeah, there's just weird things that you might do because you need to go that extra mile to make sure your skiing's optimal. But again, we're probably arguing that the audience in general might want to believe they're like that or want to believe they're going to reach that standard. But you're probably not. And you probably need to do a lot more th um, things to your skiing before you start just adapting your pole Tinkering length. With your pole, yeah. But... I agree that um, it does make a difference. So we see this all the time with our students that if they've brought their own poles from home, that we often have to send them into the shop and cut them because it does absolutely make a difference having shorter poles with a lot of people, with a lot of people. Um, any expert ski, anybody who's good, it doesn't matter their age, anything like that, will 100% benefit from having a shorter pole than they think they should have. And there's a lot of reasons to it. 
Um, but just believe us at this stage that it, it will help you. And it's something that you might want to consider, especially if you look at a video of yourself and it does look a bit cumbersome with your poles, you know, as when you're planting them. Uh, one of the lads, one of the lads, Daniel, who was, he was one of the younger ones on the camp last week, he was 30. And he's, in his short turns, he's, it was coming from his elbow. And it was because his they were too they were too long. He had to literally lift them up to get them into plant. Yeah. Um but sent him back to the shop, got some higher poles, five centimetres shorter and hey presto, his pole plant in his short term. Timing and cha- everything. Changed, yeah. yeah, changed dramatically. We've we've got we've got a, a day one, day three, day five comparison of his skiing. And you can see the pole plant changed between day one and day three. Yeah. Um just by yeah. shortening it. Yeah, um, I think video is obviously going to be a great thing to, to work out if your poles are upsetting you or actually helping you. Of course, one of the big problems is we're talking about cutting poles down. I mean, this is the, the realm of the expert again. M- most people can't pole plant. They, they <laughs> don't actually know the timing of it. They don't really know why they're pole planting. You know, the, 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 it's difficult. And if you ever come on a ski instructor course, obviously it's one of the questions that always comes up in a ski instructor exam. You know, mm-hmm. name the so many reasons as to why we pole plant. Um, which is, is always interesting because when you look at how important those reasons are for a pole plant, and one of them, the most important reasons to me is that third point of contact, that stability that it provides, um, especially for people with lack of core awareness, etc. But it creates a great balance stability in your, your, your core as you connect in between turns. And I was actually going to say something about why um, that's so important, but I can't actually remember now why. <laughs> I actually asked myself a question. I forgot what it was. Um, but that 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 important issue of of the pole plant, it, it it obviously needs you to be educated. It needs you to know when to use it, what's the timing, and, and how to use it. And it's it's so important that you get a lesson on pole planting. And if it is, if a ski instructor spends a two hour lesson that you paid for talking about pole plant, it's not wasted time. Don't no. think he's wasted your time because actually. He's really, really helped you. Um, because getting that pole plant and getting it correct is great, which that was the answer to the question I was asking myself. <laughs> okay. Why do ski instructors then do exercises without poles? Mm. Because it's almost like that pole is such an integral part of skiing that that to me would be more waste of time than having a lesson about pole plant and taking the poles off somebody. And I know, look, I get it. No, skiing without poles, I did it one one season. I remember doing it for four weeks solid at the start of the season. And it did it did massively help at that level when I was still working through my skiing more. Um, and I can get the understanding of, look, yeah, you, you know, you're definitely going to be to tune in differently. You've removed that third point of contact. You've removed that balance here, that timing, etc. So it can be helpful. But generally for a recreational skier, I would say keep your poles with you. Learn how to pole plan properly and shorten the pole. Um, and you don't have to, like, chop up your brand new poles you can try them out first it's shop or something try try a shorter pole just go five centimeters shorter Let's see what yeah. happens yeah just one one little thing linking back to one of the videos we did a while back about good and bad uh, exercises and one of the things that you had a big gripe about was um some of the trainers taking the poles off people in bad weather bad conditions low light thick snow and then doing this clapping short term thing. Oh yeah, the clappy one. I love that. Well one. literally we spoke about that on the podcast and we put it out on the Saturday and then I think it was on the Monday I was on the Mice Google and I had to pull my phone out very quickly to make a video to send to you because <laughs> what was happening but one of those trainers was doing exactly what we'd said we absolutely hated. And the only person that could do it was the trainer. Was the trainer yeah. All of the other guys were in the back falling over, almost flapping around Yeah, and you have to always look at it and think, well, what's the relevance of that? Because don't get me wrong, you know, you could argue and go, well, yeah, of course they are. They've got to practice this. They've got to practice this. But they don't practice it. That's the problem. They do it on one run or two runs, and then they don't get to practice it for the five weeks. They probably have to practice it to master it. But secondly, what are they mastering? I'm still confused. What is it that, that, that that's mastering when they can't actually even put a crude attempt at it? Mm. Because let's face it, if they were making a crude attempt, you'd go, okay, then in the very early practice phase of this, you know, so give them some time. But yes, as Andy says, 99% funny. of the time, people are just... Couldn't do it. Just not doing it makes anything. Makes the trainer look the nuts though, doesn't it? 
<laughs> possibly, possibly. <laughs> if that's what you need to do. <laughs> so that was cutting. But I, oh, we're going to tackle another subject. But I think we'll leave it for the next one. Yeah, we'll, we'll do, do a separate one. We'll do a separate yeah. one because that poll thing. What do you reckon about polls? Is it something that you even think about? Is do you use your polls? And oh, do you use your pole straps or do you not use your pole straps? <laughs> dun, 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 dun. And that's a big one. That one, yeah. especially with the new lecky sort of poles, and people yeah. often have the clippy on ones and mm. stuff like that. I know it really not nerves some of our trainers if our students don't put their straps on mm-hmm. and they're like flopping around. Obviously, people don't put their pole straps on when they're in deep powder. No. You know, you would always have your poles loose so they or can just... off piste. Yeah, in the yeah. off piste. But on the piste, it, a lot of ski instructors will look at it and think it looks messy, for example. Oh, if, if, the, if the strap is flapping around, then yeah. yeah, you look like a tourist. But I would be reluctant just to remove the strap. Yeah, just cut it off. Yeah. yeah. I normally just say, just cut the strap off. Yeah. Um, so that would be the answer yeah. to that. But, but do you use your strap or do you not use your strap? Let us know because yeah. we never used to on dry slope because we'd break our thumbs. Yeah, break your thumbs, yeah. Mm. Did that three times. Bye for now. Juicy.